Good morning, guys. Hey, today I'm back on the Tully, and um, what we're going to work on today, what I'm going to show you today, hopefully show you, is dry fly fishing. Okay, there is caddis coming off. Uh, to me, caddis are harder to imitate. Dry fly fishing for caddis are harder to imitate than mayflies. Mayflies, you basically have to get a great drag-free drift. Okay, caddis. Drag free drips most of the time, but sometimes they want a little bit of action on top of the water because a lot of these fish are taking emergers. Most of the time with caddis, they take the emergers or they take ones that are dancing on top of the water, okay? Um, I still advocate going for a drag free drift. I usually get 90% of my fish on a drag free drift. Um, occasionally as a last resort I will try to dance it on top of the water and it has worked but more than likely the drag free drift is still the best okay um, I'm using my um, four weight outfit out today because I wanted to bring a two weight out but there's just too much wind and you don't you know you need a little bit heavier stuff when it's windy out uh, to cut through that wind and um, so I'm using my four weight outfit I'm using 6X as my tippet. These fish have been pounded on the Tully by me and tons of other guys the past week or two. And um, we got fish. There's a circle down there, but I want to see. There, see him? There he goes. Okay, that splashy rise that you see with the caddis um, is pretty indicative of them taking emergers, okay? Um, a little preparation beforehand. When you get to the stream, be patient please be patient stand there and watch the stream for a minimum of at least five minutes five minutes is nothing sometimes I'll stand and watch it for 15 minutes to find out where a lot of the fish are rising you don't want to go in a hole after just one fish and blow the hole for five other fish or six other fish that might be rising I have about three fish up here rising at different times I have two fish down here that are rising. I really want to fish it from that side of the stream because I don't have that much room to back cast. Not that I need a ton of room to back cast, but you want to position yourself in the best place to at least um, go after several fish, okay? It's diff I mean, this is a big stream, so you want to do something. On a small stream, you don't have much choice. You work your way upstream or downstream whatever you're doing but mostly upstream and pick off fish at a time but on a big stream like this where there's a hatch coming off and you have a bunch of risers position yourself in a position that you can go after several fish okay and um, like I said I'm using 6x um, uh, my cutthroat furled leader I do have to treat that I don't have to have to I dry fly fish with it plenty of times even after an infant <laughs> and it still works fine but um, uh, you, you want your you know your fly line and your leader floating on top as much as possible and um, with that said um, you guys who do a fair amount of fishing minimum once a year because most guys don't get out that much might get out once a week or twice a month or something like that but I get out close to 100 days a year so at least once a month I will clean my fly line with baby shampoo and I just get some baby shampoo put it on a washcloth pull my line through several times and then get a clean washcloth and pull it through several times okay baby shampoo is very mild very safe for the fly lines okay um, and like I said taking care of your um, taking care of your leader whether it's mono whatever you're using uh, you know make sure you check it make sure you're using I always advocate using the heaviest tippet possible um, boy, the fish are rising down here like crazy and um, okay so let's get back to the dry fly fishing and the caddis today I am using I'm going to show you here it is a La Fontaine bubble pupa okay this has no bead on it people are like oh bubble pupa why are you fishing it you know I'm, I'm not I'm not even I don't really even want to fish it underneath I want to fish it on top my soft tackles and my bubble pupas and my emergers I will fish them on top as much as I will fish them underneath on top meaning that when they are dry before I use them I will put a little bit of floating on them okay if you're using the frog fanny stuff 
make sure you get that white powder off, okay? Um, and I will use the gel first, and then afterwards, after it gets wet or catch several fish, after every fish, make sure you wash the slime off. Get that bug back in the water, shake it around a couple times underneath the water, or dip it a couple times, get the slime off. It will not float the same if you don't get the slime off. Boy, this fish is just <laughs> rising like crazy down here, all these rings. He wants, boy, he's hungry. And um, so let's see if I can get a picture of him again. There's two of them. There's one pointing the rod right there and then about four feet upstream. A little bit further out, there's one there. So there's two of them. There he goes. There he goes, okay? We're going to go after him first. Um, ideally, ideally, you would like a downstream presentation. Your fly um, uh, going to the fish before your fly line. If you have to fish upstream to them, if... Oh, boy, that was a big one. Look at that splash. Man, that was a big fish. Ooh. And um, hopefully he can, man, that was a big fish. And um, but like I said, uh, you want a downstream presentation. Um, always take out more line than the distance of the way the fish is. Meaning the fish is 10 yards away, 30 feet. You want to take out about 35 feet. You want to present that fly with as much um, no drag at all. Um, you want to put him in line right, right with the fish and feed your line down to him. If it's upstream, make sure you're fishing it at an angle. You don't want to line the fish straight over, underneath, straight over top of them. Um, I've caught plenty of fish lining the fish, but you can get away with that if that fish is in a feeding mode and he's just focused on every bug coming down and he's, but if he's being picky, if you line them, pretty much you're going to either spook them or he's not going to come up for your fly. Okay. So let's uh, get started here. We're going to go for this little guy first here, downstream of us. There he goes again. He just rose again. Okay. And um, he's about 10 yards away. Your first couple false cast, you're judging distance. I got room behind me. Okay. So you're judging distance. And um, there he goes again, okay. And I am gonna, I caught a puddle cast. He's coming good, he's coming up good. So he should take this. <laughs> I say that, making it sound easy, but <laughs> these fish have fooled me <laughs> plenty of times, even when they're feeding like crazy. There he goes again, okay. So we're gonna drop this in. Puddle cast right there. That's going right down to him. I might be a little bit off, a little bit. Let's see. I was a little bit to the right. Okay. I was a little bit to the right. So let's get back out there again. Boom. Eh. It's about the same spot. There he goes. Oh, missed him. Ah. There you go. You saw him. You missed him. <laughs> but he came up for it. Man, he came up for it. Oh, one right in front of me, guys. So here I'm going to use a reach cast. I throw it out in front of me, then bring my line upstream. That's not bad. Let me see if I can... A little bit further, right there. Right there. Coming down, coming down, coming down. Oh, got it. Boy, he whacked it. How about that, guys? <laughs> Not a big guy, but man, he whacked it. That was on the CDC dry, size 20. Okay. Little guy, 10, 11 inches. Okay. Okay, okay, come on, boy. Whatever oh, That was a skinny 11 inches. Okay, guys. Now I told you I caught that fish. It this fit this fly has got slime on it. So I'm gonna watch. Just dip it. 
dip it in the water five, six, seven, eight times. Get that slime off of it. Okay. Now I can use frog fanny, but first this thing is soaked now with water. So I have my handy dandy paper towel for CVC. I just put it in there and squeeze it. Squeeze, 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 pinch it real tight. Hold it there for a few seconds. Open it up. Okay, do it again. And then you want to fluff up that CDC. Fluff it up, fluff it up, fluff it up. Now, if that doesn't float good because lately, say the last several years, everybody's CDC, I don't use this word much, sucks. Everybody's CDC isn't that great compared to what it used to be in the early 2000s or in the 90s, okay? So we got it fluffed up nice again, but I don't know where they're getting the CDC from, but in the last 10 years, CDC, it looks good, but it does not float good. It does not seem to have the same oils or where they're pulling it from. Um, but this, or whether they're dyeing it for the colors or whatever, but it just does not have the same uh, uh, floatability as it used to. Um, so let's, uh, so that's what you do, okay? You can use the frog fanny on it. And like I said, if this doesn't, um, float that well I will get the powder and put it on but um we're gonna try it this way we gotta look for another riser okay so we'll be back hey guys here's our caddis that's hopping down on the water this little guy body wise he's about a size 20 it looks like he's about a size 18 with the wings but that's just the wing you gotta go by the body size let's see if I could get him without him flying away pinch him and let's look at his color of his body underneath okay so Oh, oh, there he is. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't fast enough. <laughs> it flew into me, but I wasn't fast enough. Okay. So we got to go smaller. Because I definitely have too big of one on here. Okay. So, okie dokie. We'll be right back. Sneak up a little bit higher. Take two more steps. Boom. Uh, it's not bad. Still like the. That's better, right there. There he goes. Ha ha! Said right there. Okay, guys, we got that one off for you. And that was on the CDC again. Another. Another one around 11 inches. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh. That was like 10 and a half inches. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to dunk my fly again. Clean it off and um, make sure it's nice and dry. And uh, okay, so just dunk and dunk and dunk and dunk and dunk. And. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, guys, there's one rising up here around 12 yards away. I am using my bubble pupa merger again. Caddis, like a La Fontaine without a bead. There he goes, see him? See the circle? So we're gonna throw it off at an angle and drop it in upstream of him about two, three feet. Boom, that's not bad, that's not bad. Ah, now it's drifting in closer to us. Right, get over a little bit more. Ah, went up. Oh, he took it, he took it, <laughs> he took it, there you go. Wow, 
we? Okay, so that was on the La Fontaine bubble pupa merger, okay? There you go. Okay. See that? It's going to lay out now, right there. Okay. There we go. Same thing with this fly, you want to get that slime off of it, dry it off. Um, now with the bubble pupil merger, sometimes I do have to use the, the frog fanny stuff, the powder. Okay, so we'll be right back. Not bad, oh, it's just a bad drift. Cannot get a good drift, because there's two seams there. That's not bad. That's not bad. Oh, he's got it. Got him. Got him, got him, got him. He came up real slow and just sucked it under. Okay. So let's get this boy. This one's a little better. This one's like a fatter 11-incher. <laughs> okay. That was on, not an elk hair, but a coastal deer hair caddis. And this got some, a little shuck on it too there. So this is like a dry emerger mixture. Okay, okay, so let me dry him off and we'll get back at it. Okay. There you go, over there. Oh, got it, got him. He took it that time. He took it that time. There you go, man. This is on the bubble pupa merger. Well, there was two of them there, so I don't know which one this is. Get him up here. It looks like he's foul hooked. <laughs> Took it on top. Uh, on the front fin. I think it's on. I don't know. It's on the belly. <laughs> oh well. Uh, not a bad fish. Good 12 inches. A fat boy. Okay. So he must have taken it and spit it out or whatever. I don't know where my line was, but he was hooked on the side. It came up for it. it. looked like he smashed it. Okay, so we'll be right back. Let me clean this fly off. And let me show you the fly <laughs> first again. Okay, this is the uh, bubble pupa upside down. Okay. Okie dokie. Okay, guys. Got a couple rising here right in front of me. I'm going to use downstream presentation. Okay. And it's too far over. But there's one there that's closer. Boom. Right there. Right around there. There he goes. Got him. Look at that. First cast over his head. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> That's okay. We fooled them. <laughs> They're just nipping it. Just barely sucking it under. Okay, guys. One rising. Downstream about 15 yards. Okay. Let's see. Boom. Oh, that's good cast right there. Right on the money. Oh, we need to take it. Huh, that was right on the money. Right there, that one too. Come on, come on, come on, suck it in. Nope. Not bad, ah, let's 
see it. There he goes. Oh, got him. There he goes. Okay, let's hold on to one. <laughs> let's land one out of the last six. <laughs> There we go. This is on the pupa emerger, the bubble pupa emerger, fish dry. Okay, there you go. Oh. Oh. Okay, show you that. There it is. Bubble pupa emerger. Okay. Let's see. That's not bad. Not a bad drift. Not a bad drift. Got him! Got him! Okay, this one's a little bit nicer. Ugh. A little bit nicer. <laughs> I can't answer that right now. Okay, there you go, this one's huh, about a good 12 inches, this one, there you go, nice, this is on the pupa merger, okay, there it is, okay, okay guys, got one rising right in front of me, I go right down to him. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, I think I went out actually a little too far. Let's bring it in a little bit. That's eh, okay. Oh, there he goes. Got him. Oh, jeez. <laughs> had him. I had him. Man, so many fish. I'm just, I'm hooking them. I'm hooking them, but can't keep them on. They're just barely nipping at it. There he goes, got him, got him, look at that. Okay, so this boy's gonna, gonna hold on to this one. Okay. So, see guys, use that La Fontaine bubble pupa emerger and you can fish it as a dry too, okay? Fish that baby as a dry and, because a lot of times those caddis are crawling out of their shuck. There he goes. That's fine. They're crawling out of their shuck near the surface, and it looks like a bubble that they're crawling out of. And um, so that's why they go for it, okay? That's why they go for it. Let me clean him off and get him prepared again for the next fish. Go on there. That fish just rose here. Let's let that one go down. Okay, this guy just froze right here at the, <laughs> there's two of them at the tail of this pool. So, this will be a decent presentation, there we go. So that should go right down to him. That's pretty close to where he's at. There he goes, got it, got him, look at that. There you go. He kind of came from about two, three feet away. I saw him swimming over right to it. Okay. okay guys you got some picky fish like I said go put on that LaFontaine bubble pupa merger and fish it dry okay this is a size 20 I'm using okay uh. oh. Oh, come on, boy. Oh, you're sticking your eyes now. Okay. I haven't placed it yet where I wanted it. No. It's close. Not where I want it. Come on. Not get this baby to land where I want it to land. Yeah. 
There you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. There he goes. Look at that. Make the right cast. Make the right cast. Present it the right way. <laughs> and that boy was cooperative. And that was on the um, bubble pupa merger again. I put that back on. Okay. There you go. There you go. There you go. Nice. Good 12 incher. Uh -huh. Okay. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, guys. Hey, um, I am show you here on my computer. I'm going through my clips <laughs> on this video, and I saw there was no closing clip. Okay, so I'm gonna do it right here in my den, and back here is my tying area, and my computer's right here, and um, so. Uh, this whole video was on focusing on dry fly fishing, okay? Try to help you guys out um, who don't know or maybe it's new to your dry fly fishing. A lot of guys start out nymph fishing, that's great. and um, But there is a whole other world to dry fly fishing, a whole great world to fly fly, dry fly fishing. Love seeing that hit on, hit on top of the surface. And um, uh, so... As I showed you out on the stream, what I want to start with is in the beginning. You're getting, it, you're getting your your uh, equipment ready at your car, okay? First, make sure you have a nice, clean um, line. Also, make sure it's treated. If you're using leaders, sometimes some people like to wipe their leaders down with a floating uh, substance. Um, your fly line usually treated with, um, uh, let me see if I have it right here. Oh, boy, boy. Mucilin. Mucilin, mucilin, mucilin. Uh, do I have any mucilin? Yeah, I got one pack of mucilin here. Okay, I'll show it to you. There's different synthetic mucilin and, and right there. Okay, so that's mucilin. Let's put it down there for you. Okay, mucilin helps your fly line float. And you could put it on your leader. You could put it on, um, if, you, if you have a furled leader too. Uh, if not, uh, you can use your floating gel on a furled leader too. Uh, but make sure when you do apply it that you apply it when it is dry. Okay. Um, as far as your tippet and leader, um, I never drop down more than two sizes. If I'm building my tippet down and I have, let's say, 3x, I will a lot. I would probably say 70. Now, 60 to 70 percent of my dry fly fishing, I do it 5x. So if I don't have 4x behind it, the lowest I'll go behind it is 3x. I like having a little bit thicker tippet behind my tip, a thicker leader behind my tippet, because to me it helps it roll over the cast. Okay. Um, so if I'm using 5x, I'll usually use 4 or at most 3x. I won't jump more than two sizes. Same way if I'm, um, or if you have 4x on, you can go to 5 or um, you can go down to 6x for your tippet. I generally do not go down to 7 or 8x unless I'm using midges or if I'm using trico or very low clear or super flat water, glass type water. Then I will use 6x or 7x and usually with smaller flies. I will not use 7x on like a fly that is maybe a size 16 or sm or smaller. Usually it'll be 18s, 20s, and 22s, or down the trichos, 24s, and 26s. Okay, so uh, usually you have some knot slippage right there. If you're using, let's say, a 7 or 8X with like a size 16 fly, um, you get, it gets real hairy. You really have to tie your knots really careful, okay? As far as when you get down to the stream, as I stated earlier in the video, please be patient. Uh, and a, a patient observer is is will will definitely um, do better than somebody who rushes right into the stream. You see the fish rise, and you're going after the first one you see rise. Take your time, five, ten, fifteen minutes. Um, observe the situation. 
try to situate situate yourself in a position where if, you, if it's possible to go for numerous fish uh, just don't go for the f closest one to you um, ideally you like to put yourself in, in a position where you're doing a downstream presentation if you can't make sure that you're at least if you're doing an upstream presentation you're off at an angle okay not straight below the fish lining the fish okay um, as far as your line how much line you take out I said this also I'm just reiterating everything I've said in the video uh, in the beginning if your fish is 10 yards away 30 feet away I generally take out 35 to 40 feet of line do not take out just enough line just to reach the fish you need line to play with you need line to let that fly go past the fish a safe distance so when you pick up you don't spook the fish if he doesn't take it okay um, I everybody has a different um, way that they can uh, or or rhythm that they cast I'm usually a slower if you watch a lot of my dry fly fishing in some of my videos I am a nice I have a nice rhythm to it I am very patient with it I'm not really fast um, take your time you just keeping that fly line up at a nice level keep it up at a level um, distance you know above the water or height I should say and when you do shoot for your um, targeted fish you don't want to throw down to the water you want to throw above the fish and let let the fly and your leader flutter down to the fish okay flutter down to the water okay um, also sometimes especially in a downstream presentation I will at the very end of my cast when it's fluttering down I will pop it back just a smidge um, that creates a little bit more slack for it to unravel as it's going down to the fish that helps it go down to the fish drag free so I'm gonna cast above the fish let it flutter down and then I give it just a teeny little pop back a teeny little pop and that will help it almost fall kind of in like a puddle and those all those little s curves will unravel as it's going down to the fish hopefully drag free okay and um don't a bad a bad habit a lot of guys get into that i see is they condition the fish they go after one or two fish they keep pounding them pounding them until they think they're going to piss the fish off and have them take the fish or finally and pfft, occasionally that works but for most time you're just conditioning that fish to refuse that fly if you have four or five fish feeding around you go after that one um, if he refuses it go after another one come back to him let him start taking a couple of the naturals again kind of forget your flies here then try him again um, so and if you sting him sometimes let him go for 10 minutes even if you sting him and he resumes feeding after you sting him he may come up and take your fly again okay so and I, I I mean I have a lot of flies so I don't you know I don't know what most guys carry with them but if you have several different patterns of the same type of bug uh, try different give them an honest chance of floating over the fish a good presentation if they don't want it it's not the fly of choice change out and most of the time try a fly that is one size smaller than what you think a lot of guys usually oversize the fly okay they usually look at the wing and not the body and most times whether it's a caddis or mayfly the wings are a little bit bigger than the body so um, you know if you think it's an 18 put a put a 20 on okay a lot of times just going down one size on that fly that fish will come up and probably take it um, I have a lot more success actually out in the sunlight with it because then when it's sunlight up sunlight the sun is out the fish see more of a silhouette than the actual color okay and if they're not seeing color um, you basically have to represent the silhouette the size of the fly the shape of the fly and get away with a little bit more to me I think at least I do when there's sun out um, and what else do I want to touch on um, and and you see me using 
um, non-traditional flies as dry flies, like the uh, La Fontaine pupa merger, like a soft hackle or a wet fly. A lot of times before I use those flies, I will treat them to help them float on top. Sometimes those wet flies or emerger type patterns will represent a cripple one floating on the surface better than your dry fly, okay? And experiment. Go out there, just make the biggest thing, whether it's caddis or whether it's mayfly is, I advocate, like I said in the video, as far as a drag-free presentation. A lot of guys talk about in caddis fishing, giving it a wiggles, and it does work sometimes, but for the most part, those fish will take a drag-free drift better than they will take a fly that has movement on it okay um i mean i hope the, i hope you saw that in this video um and that you can get a good idea also as far as the, as the casting goes different types of casting um orvis has great instructional casting videos by pete kutzer um go to the orvis website and look at his instructional videos for casting and uh, just study them he has a nice color rod with a, with a really white colored line background that you can really see how he's casting and and um get a great great idea of what he's doing whether it's i mean the most um the most common uh, cast i think you're going to use is either a slack line cast or a reach cast or a puddle cast where you're dropping the fly down in front of the um, uh, in, in the same line as the fish is feeding but you're giving it slack and you're managing that slack if you're a right-handed caster with your other hand with your non-dominant hand managing that that slack line and then uh, letting the slack line that is on top of the water before the fish feed down to with your fly down to the fish okay um, so check that out and let me see what else um oh i i guess that's it so you know guys if you like the video give it a thumbs up um if you have any questions please answer ask me below and i'll try to i try to answer everybody's um everybody's um uh questions um i want to give an explanation too as to why i my only social media that i am on is youtube which is i'm that that's that's enough for me um kind of old school i don't like being on my phone more than i have to and um uh, i know i'd probably have a ton more subscribers if i was on facebook twitter and instagram and stuff like that but i i i i, <laughs> I have enough i have enough between me going out to trips and um doing my other responsibilities and having to be on my phone all the time answering you know more and more uh more and more questions or um you know so so that's why i'm not on those other social media networks and um uh, i know i'd probably be spreading it more but hopefully by you guys word of mouth or other guys seeing it I i'm happy with helping whoever looks at it now and you know sometimes it's great that <laughs> you help out one guy and that that's enough for me but I thank all my subscribers. I am so happy doing my little hobby turned into kind of like a, uh, a little mission now, okay? I really like helping guys out. And, um, you know, I hope everybody out there is helping others also, okay? So, um, like I said, guys, thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.